Public Schools Board of Education meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. Perfect time. I pledge allegiance pledge to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. on some of the summer projects we have going on uh, from the facilities. Uh, Bill has been very active with his team. Uh, Brown has power back on. Uh, we went off the grid there for a while to change the switch gear. Uh, we have a ton of trees cleared. Well, a ton. Uh, that's relative. We have trees cleared <laughs> in the areas of where the new uh, playground area uh, was identified. Uh, a lot of carpet being replaced, 12 classrooms at hand. And um, we have a new water bottle filling station, two of them actually, on the second and third floor. We had one on the first floor, second and third floor, and now two of those are very popular with the kids. Uh, Jeffrey paved the playground areas and then a picnic table. It's about a 10 foot by 100 foot kind of area. Entry ramp's been rebuilt, uh, painted the exterior doors, over 20 of them at Jeffrey. At Ryerson, we uh, removed the built in table in the pod to hallways, which, if you've been in Ryerson, there's some built in structures there that have kind of made that difficult to, to do small group activities out there. And uh, entry ramps were rebuilt over here at TCLC. Uh, classroom is renovated up at Polson. Uh, rooms 20, 21, and 22. Some cabinets painted, removed the fixed tables, so those old science rooms, uh, new floor tile, and new furniture and some new flooring in the band room and auditorium stage. Lots of activity facilities in a short window. We stayed in school late and we get back right, you know, the beginning of September, so their window is short for open summer, but Bill's done a great job uh, getting all these projects done. Technology, uh, art, big focus, obviously, you know, the bus routes and so forth, but the, um, for art and transportation, but the technology area, uh, getting the Chromebook plan out in place for the freshmen that are all getting the one-to-one. Uh, program this year, so we've been working with the high school administration and some of the folks up there and getting that organized. Uh, human resources, we're still hiring. <laughs> we still um, had a couple of late resignations from some folks for, for moves or someone took a different job, someone took an administrative job, so we've had some turnover there. Teaching ranks, and we we're always filling parents up in the 11th hour or two, so um, we have some of those paraprofessional openings as well. In uh, special ed, we just ended our uh, summer school uh, a little over a week ago. Uh, a lot of kids were uh, participating in that this summer, just wrapped that up for the summer. And um, in the curriculum, this, this building has been uh, just pumping all summer long with uh, science folks from kindergarten through the high school uh, and our computer technology education. So it's been a busy summer for us all around. That's summer projects, any questions? Okay, uh, Roman update. Um, Typically, the kindergarten numbers are the ones that we look at the most. And uh, right now, all of our sections, this is, this is the October 14th, so today's update. Uh, every section has either 16 or 17 in it right now, which is right in the sweet spot for us for, for kindergarten. Overall, 147 kindergartners, and we projected 138. So uh, we're right about that number. We will get enrollments in the 11th hour. It might not be kindergarten, but we get enrollments right up until the start of school and the beginning of school. Um, as far as any uh, areas of concern right now, we, as of today, we don't at the elementary level. Um, it's been, for board members who are returning and been here in the past, it's not uncommon to recommend an extra section uh, to break up some of the larger class sizes that just happened through having three schools and students moving in. No concerns this summer at all. We have one, two, three, uh, four, five sections with 21 students in it across various third and fourth grade classrooms in, in various schools. Besides that, we're looking at 20 and under, uh, nice sections and uh, nice and smooth numbers also um, across the three schools with good equity across the schools. So we're in good shape there. Um, I get that kindergarten number though, just <laughs> bear in mind, we graduated 300 kids. So, you know, we're bringing in 147, we graduated 300. So just keep that in mind whenever we talk about it in a moment. Um, the last update, and I know uh, Seth's going to talk about this facilities, but um, Katie and I met with um, uh, Gene Fitzgerald and Tom Banish in our uh, leadership group, and we talked about having a follow-up to a tri-board. 
we talked about having first initial Q&A, just based on the information that was presented, and we're looking for September 20th, the facilities committee meeting to host that here. And then in October, we would meet after that and have uh, another tri-board meet the circle back. So that's kind of where we are with that. Invite will go out uh, for the September 20th meeting uh, uh, by the end of the week. With all the hiring and all that, do you have dates for letters to go out? Letters for? Cla classes. Oh, teachers. Uh, I, I think we stuck to the 21st. I okay. think that was the date from the, from the outset. And um, we have one classroom teacher that we anticipate will be locked in before then. Um, with Gail out, she does the last interview, so I may step in for her to do the final interview just to make sure we get track. Any other questions? Good. Yep. Good. Um, so, committee reports. Planning committee. We met last Tuesday. Um, the first item we talked about was interdisciplinary course proposals. Um, the credit mastery based assessment will be a new requirement from the state to replace the old capstone requirement. The exciting part about this is we can design this any way we want um, because the capstone did not allow for much of any flexibility and it was not great for all kids. Each student will need to earn one credit and can do this by taking multiple pathways or choices, each would be a half credit, um, or taking the same pathway twice. Um, and students will be able to direct their choice of classes. All will be pass-fail, which will allow students to push themselves outside of their comfort zones with little risk. Um, Gail was very excited about it. I'm sorry she's not here today. Um, and um, classes will be typical size and will be implemented for the 2021-2022 school year. Um, um, credit mastery based assessment. And we'll have more information as it continues to be developed. Um, summer curriculum work update, Tom touched on it a little bit, but there has been intensive science and CTE writing along with social studies revisions for U.S. history and historical economics for the high school. The fifth and grade, fifth and sixth grade assessments for um, social studies have been tweaked a bit based on learnings from last year, and freshman and sophomore English continues to be refined, which is allowing for more student-motivated reading and writing. The high school English has been a combination of training and curriculum. School reconfiguration and staffing update. Um, this summer, the admin council, over the course of the summer, will have six days of retreats with a main focus around the school reconfiguration and planning process. We, as a planning committee, reviewed the Gantt chart and current statuses for all areas of the plan. <clears throat> um, we also did an enrollment update, a little bit more than what Tom just shared, just so everybody's aware. Um, we had heard about the 147 enrolled kindergartners so far which equates to nine kindergarten sections, three at Island, four at Jeffrey, and two at Ryerson. Um, in total, we have 44 elementary sections, um, and the total for the district K through 12, at least at this point, is 27 and 29. And the breakdown is um, Island 258, Jeffrey 359, Ryerson 198, Brown 387, Polson 438, and Hand 1089. These numbers could all continue to increase a little bit as people move in and out and roll over the summer. That's where we were as of a week ago. Any questions? Okay, moving on to personnel. Negotiations are ongoing with the Teamsters. Uh, meeting in this week, no other report. Thank you. Policy Committee, Emily. Yes, so we have several um, policies for you tonight, several are on our second reading. I'll briefly go through them. We have one for a third reading and vote. File on 9450, you'll see in your packets the version that the policy committee tonight voted to amend the proposal as shown here in your packet um, based on feedback from last week's special workshop and board input. This is, of course, subject to additional feedback as tonight is the second reading. Um, so we are continuing to take comments on that. Um, policy 3150, medical reimbursement for special education students, is also here tonight for a second reading. It's in your packet. I think everyone here has heard the overview of it. Um, I can answer any questions if you have any. Policy 5125.1, health and medical records, is also here for second reading. 
policy number 6161.3, comparability of services. Second reading tonight. Policy number 6090.1, IEP and special education program. For a second reading. Uh, policy 5144.4, physical exercise and discipline of students. For a second reading. Policy number 6162.51, survey of students or student privacy. Also second reading. Those policies, other than bylaw 9450, are all based on recommendations from CAVE due to recent legislative changes or updates and modifications. And then finally, we have tonight policy 4141, social networking, which is before the board tonight for a third and final reading. We had our second reading of this policy on April 24th, and we canceled our May policy meeting, and then it just sort of got lost in the shuffle. So it's back tonight for a third and final reading as you may recall this is regarding staff social media use to exercise good judgment and the inappropriate you can read it in your packets um, content posting are subject to you know constant <coughs> and there's more details in the, in the policy if you have any questions about that so we will have to vote on that, but I don't know if we want, if the people have any questions or comments about, about any of those in particular, or if, if, if it makes more sense for us to vote on that. Third reading first, perhaps, whatever you think is most. We'll do that during the consent. Yeah, okay. during the, um, oh good, that's good. on my list. Yep, got it. Yep. Okay. Any comments about Emily's report? I, I just wanted to point out briefly that so we had some really good qualitative discussion at the policy committee level on that report that is coming up for a vote i mean on that policy that's coming up for a vote tonight and mm -hmm. the main focus of our discussion was surrounding kind of like the constitutional limitations of free speech and versus contractual constraints on on free speech and not wanting to be too harsh in our proclamations and our prohibitions mm -hmm. so that we wouldn't attract good teachers and good talent but at the same time wanting to protect our students and you know and communities from um you know people who might use their position as a, as a teacher to um you know to go on a, on a soapbox um in modern um social media so it, it was really an interesting and fascinating discussion, and thank you for uh, leading that and bringing it back. I think it's in a good place now. Yeah, can it's I add, the, you know, 4141, having observed the policy committee work on it, I think did a great job. I think it's, I think it reads better now than the one from Kate. I think mm -hmm. it's, I think it's, I think it's written more it's fairly good. to the employees and is more inclusive, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of thought went into us. Good job. Thank you everyone, it was a lot, a team effort. Um, I do want to just bring up for 9450, some of the revisions that you'll see in your packet. I know there's a lot of color and, and highlighting and I appreciate it being printed in color so we can see that. Thank you, that. Wendy. Yes, thank Did you, Wendy. Us? <laughs> so just so everyone's aware, um, what you have in your packet in red is the original revisions and then what is in yellow highlighting or blue is what were sort of amendments that came out of the special workshop last week and um, board feedback. The revised version in here, the three main portions of it are um, keeping the facilities committee as an ad hoc committee, um, but listing it in the bylaws along with its responsibility so that its work is quantified somewhere. Um, amend, expand, and retitle the planning committee to the Curriculum and Student Development Committee, establishing a new communication committee, and then also under duties of standing committees, um, establishing a process for tasks not regularly assigned to a particular committee to go through with the board chairperson. There have been um, lots of discussions and lots of questions about where certain items might fit or where they may not fit and how we would go about that. Um, we discussed that at length today in policy. Um, we sort of talked about trying to keep it general and broad enough to be inclusive of a lot of things um, while not being very specific with the bullet points. And um, I can talk more offline or with people about specifically where things fit in, but it seems that everything that has been done by planning 
either can fit there or maybe is, is done in a different way in collaboration with other committees. Um, and I can go through all the details at another time if that's more. So will you be sending the comments from tonight's policy meeting or are you going to go through it now? Whatever people prefer, I don't know what's more appropriate for the process. I can share a report. I do think there were some good comments. If we discussed tonight particular changes um, to add some language and move things around. And so what I was thinking was to incorporate those into some notes and share that with people in, um, you know, well in advance of the next policy meeting in two weeks. Um, but I can answer specific questions if people want. I just don't know how much time people want to spend on it or we can talk more. It's a late agenda, so if people had comments, I think now is a good time. It was, I thank you, Emily, for um, spearheading the discussion tonight. I think it was, I know I came late, but um, was, um, seemed to be fruitful and collaborative and um, really good discussion. So if anybody has questions um, based, I, I think tonight we should keep it, well, no, I think, I think if anybody has questions, I think now's a good time, right? Why not? I, I, I should point out that um, there were a couple people who were unable to be at the policy meeting tonight who are not policy committee members but who wanted their um, concerns and thoughts to be heard and um, I commend Emily for bringing those forward in their entirety. Um, it fomented a great discussion um, and I, you know we do have a, another bylaw that requires us to review the bylaws every year um, and I think it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's been a long time since we've honored that. Um, and so there are um, perhaps more changes than we deal with in a, in a typical year, um, but we're dealing with um, bylaws that haven't been changed in quite a while, so they're a bit crusty and in need of some change. And um, I think there's been some open um, discussion that has been good. It's you know, it's ultimately going to be good for the board. So, thank you for sponsoring that. Sure, um, I'm that glad. I appreciate everyone's feedback. It was helpful tonight. We discussed you know, certain things like where do teacher evaluations go and where do report cards go, and, and sort of thinking about some things that are done by the administration with you know reporting to us, and some things that um, are inclusive. For example, special education. For example, would really be part of programmatic and curriculum initiatives which are represented currently in the curriculum and student development um, bullet points here. Um, we did talk about the technology plan in particular and one thing that um, was suggested was to differentiate um, non-instructional technology to be under the purview of the facilities, ad hoc facilities committee, um, but then for the curriculum and student development committee to review instructional technology plans that are um, to provide for district programmatic and curricular initiatives. So it was one thing that came about where that technology plan lives and it sort of made sense to tease out the hardware from the curriculum oriented things. So that was one comment that we can put forward in writing. I don't want to make any changes to what you have in front of you now, but that was one thing that was clarified tonight. Um, we also discussed in particular enrollment projections and how a lot of that, there's actually policies in place requiring the enrollment and class sizes that already exist, and we get enrollment projections from Tom so that that would be staffing development is really around new programmatic initiatives but not existing things because we have policies in place that require class sizes and staffing. So it would be more that the curriculum and student development committee would make recommendations for staffing related to new or revised programmatic initiatives in particular. Um, other things that we want to share with the group or any other questions? Well, when Another thing we discussed was the general proposition that um, we have to guard against the general board tendency that all boards do, which is to claim um, some more authority than is due to the board and, and that is required by the board. Um, so we have to be careful when developing duties lists 
and responsibilities lists for the various um, committees to not um, overtake uh, duties and responsibilities that are by law or by policy delegated um, to the district itself. And um, that's always, it's always a source of some tension um, because there's the, there's the natural inclination um, to want to um, assert um, control and, and management of things, but um, we're fortunate that we have strong management and um, we have strong oversight as a board, and if we're not happy with the management, um, you know, there are avenues for us to, to address that. So that was one of the discussions that we also held surrounding the um, division of um, duties and responsibilities um, among the, uh, the various subdivisions of the board. And so we weren't um, at the workshop, but one of the things um, we talked about too was really employing the committee as a whole uh, more um, as as um, an option, you know, an option to discuss things or bring things to the full board table um, during our meetings to to address some of those um, items so that not everything might, you know specifically fall under a certain committee, but that as a committee as a whole, at any time, things can be brought to the board table. Or go to the executive committee. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Be a conduit to mm -hmm. the other committee. And that was one thing that I think we want to continue to think about for those, um, the duties, under the duties of standing committees, if it's, we want to be consistent with our bylaws often we just refers to as the board chairperson but we discussed the special workshop last weekend tonight if that would be better to be um, reviewed by the executive committee like those sort of other tasks that haven't yet been assigned a bucket be reviewed by the board chairperson or the executive committee and that's something i think we still need to sort out um, what makes sense um, i think in practicality it might be the same thing but in order for the bylaws to all be consistent so we need to um, think about that too. One other item that was raised, so I think in the original proposal, obviously in the, in the original proposal, facilities um, was proposed to be a permanent committee. After our workshop, everyone left an agreement that we will leave it open as, as stands as an ad hoc committee. Um, one item that was raised, which I think coincides with our need to review everything once a year, but to be explicit about in here, that the policy committee would review the standing of that committee again in June 2019, a year out from the proposal. So, uh, 2019, my third year? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm always going to get that wrong this year. Um, so, that, that there is some definition, which I think was unclear, especially to me as a new board member, about when that might be reviewed. So, they'll just look at it again. I thought it was supposed to be October 2020. That's when it, it ends. Dissolves. That's when it ends. But that would be the annual That's review. Temporary committee ends. Like the rest of the bylaws. That we just sort of review the work to date a year right. from now. And I, I feel like that, that may have come up when we developed the facilities committee, and I don't think it originally made it, made it into the presentation that we gave. But that this is sort of subject to ongoing review and approval. Like what's, you know, what is the committee producing and. What, it, what are the outcomes on the committee? So it would just be saying we'll we'll continue to review this and look at the <coughs> now. So that was another suggestion that came up. Thank you, Greg. Other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Keep your comments coming. We'll um, continue to. Okay, so um, as uh, folks will recall, we had a tri-board meeting on July 17th um, the, that was um, mostly called for two purposes. One was to introduce, formally introduce, and officially introduce uh, the other two main boards, the Board, board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen, um, to the 10-year master facilities plan uh, that the board had passed. Uh, that the, this board had passed, and um, secondarily to kind of spark 
a community discussion um, that uh, recognizes um, the, the rather large numbers we're talking about um, and recognizes that maybe there's room to do something differently than, than just um, spending $100 million and ending up with the same thing we have now, um, only in further disrepair uh, 10 years down the road. So um, there was a very good response from the other boards. Um, we're looking forward to seeing if, if uh, the commitments and the sentiment remains, um, but uh, we're encouraged. And um, so the, the committee met again this evening. Uh, the superintendent reported on a joint leadership meeting as it related to facilities. And as uh, Tom mentioned a moment ago, um, the recommendation was made to hold a Q&A workshop on the facilities master ten tenure, master facilities plan. Um, on September 20th, and then followed by another tri-board meeting in October. Um, and uh, we received a brief presentation from a solar company uh, that introduced us to an, a novel concept of um, how to implement potential solar power um, for the uh, Green Hill campus. Um, we received uh, Bill McMinn's facilities report, which uh, mostly consisted of um, a listing of uh, the standard maintenance and cleaning that's going on in the schools this summer, which you heard part of in the superintendent's report uh, a few moments ago. Um, we received a brief finance committee report from our finance committee liaison, Galen Colley, um, expertly delivered, I might say. And um, we also uh, briefly discussed the upcoming annual facilities report to the board, uh, which is to occur in September. Our hope is to deliver the report at the September 4th board meeting. Um, don't know if we'll be able to make that deadline that we self-imposed, but we're gonna go for it. That's, that's it, unless there are any questions. Any questions? Okay, moving on. Board member comments. I had one. Um, I was able to make it to the um, board selectman meeting yesterday. I know you all were invited as well to see. There was a presentation on the um, or on the strategic plan initiative. The town um, that, plan. Thank you. Um, that the town is um, working on. Um, they have employed um, a consulting firm out of, I think it's Ohio, I'm not positive, um, and to engage with stakeholders regarding their hopes and desires for a strategic plan um, for the town moving forward. Um, and um, a former board member, Chris Purcelli, um, am I pronouncing his name? Um, what he said. Um, was there to give the presentation. He's working as a liaison between this consulting firm um, and the town and board selectmen to help facilitate um, interviews and um, public forums and um, the like to um, engage um, with the other boards as well as the community about um, what their vision um, would be or their hopes would be for strategic plans for the town. Um, as far as the Board of Ed is concerned, um, they will be um, getting in touch with us. They um, had mentioned during the presentation that they would be requesting interviewing with two of us. Um, so we can talk a little bit more about that. I would like it to be all of us personally. Um, I'm not sure how flexible they are, but um, I'm happy to um, push that. I think it's important. Um, that said, I think we all feel pretty confident um, with our tenure um, facilities plan um, and we should continue um, you know, plugging away at that as we go forward. So if anybody has any other questions, it was a very brief presentation. There's more to come from, from um, what I was told, so I'll try and keep everybody in the loop as much as I can. But my understanding is that we have an employed paid town planner. Um, was there anything discussed at that meeting about why we have an additional liaison uh, 
appointed when we have a town planner who's getting paid to do that? No, I had that same question. It was not addressed during the presentation yesterday. And he wasn't there. The town planner was not in the room. He wasn't? Was not at the presentation. Audience response? Consented. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, I need a motion to approve the budget expenditure as of August 10th, 2018. Thank you. To approve the consent agenda. Sorry. Thank you all. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yeah. Yep. Um, I'd just like to, as always, call out the donations. Um, it's a tradition of mine. Um, there are three great donations in this one. $1,740.02 from Stop and Shop A Plus Rewards for student resources at Jeffrey Elementary School. There's a donation in the amount of $5,000 from the Jeffrey Elementary School PTO for classroom resources and a donation in the amount of $8,343 from the Island Avenue PTO to assist with field trips for the 18-19 school year. Uh, these are great, wonderful, uh, and appreciated donations. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, so I need a motion to approve the minutes of the July 17th. No, no. We're going to take a vote on the Oh, duh. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions, motion carries. Um, thank you. Um, I need a motion to approve the minutes from the July 17th board meeting. So moved. Second. Discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? No. I have to abstain. Two abstentions. Two abstentions. Mm -hmm. Can it pass? Abstentions yeah, five. Yeah. What's that one? Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Okay. So motion carries. Um, yeah. If you have a quorum, it could be two nothing. It could be two nothing, and it's okay. Yeah. Um, motion to approve the minutes of the August 6th special education workshop. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed? Abstention. Abstention. Two. Three. Oh, three. Sorry. Motion carries. Um, I need a motion to approve the list of technology equipment to be e wasted. Interested, it's all right here. So moved. Second. <laughs> Second. Um, any discussion? What is e-wasted? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> old phone books, old technology what, devices. What's the e-waste part? How they dispose. E-waste is how we do. We have a process we go through where it's either recycled. Yeah. Remove all the... It doesn't just go in the dumpster. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And everything is already all cataloged and coded, so we have to account for that. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Um, is there any old business to discuss? Um, future agenda items? I'm thinking this would be a good space too if there was something that doesn't fit in the bucket. We always breeze past this part, but yeah. if you have a future agenda item, that would be a good time to put that in. Sorry. Uh, meetings and dates of appointment uh, of importance are attached. Um, and now I need a motion to enter into. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, real quick. We probably should mention that there was a September 18th uh, board of ed meeting um, on the schedule that has to be moved to September 20th because facilities. September just 8th. facilities, not just a board facilities. of ed. Meeting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, facilities committee meeting okay. that needs to be moved to the 18th, from the 18th through the 20th because that's a non-school. Uh, there's also another change made on that calendar. 
that wasn't on the original calendar, and that was the 28th, so there was a date thrown in the calendar that wasn't there. Is that what you were referring to? Yeah, that was a few months ago. It was actually the beginning of June. It wasn't um, on the calendar. So no, no, right. It wasn't added. You're right. So, but yeah. there was emails sent. That, that I think there were several dates proposed, um, and I think Laura just didn't add it to our Outlook calendar. No, there, it wasn't on any calendar. I brought it to your right. attention, and it was put on the most yeah. recent calendar. Right, but yeah. it was proposed by email before that. We got a group of what yeah. the most people could get to, but it just didn't get to the calendar. Okay. Well, we should add that as another note of it hasn't been added still? No, 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 no. I don't know. It should no. be added in here because it doesn't. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. There's another packet. Po it's the policy. Do you need it on the 28th? When we're, when we're talking about Even dates, dates of importance, of importance. Right. I think she's just raising it as a, this is important to note. Sure. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. I think, yeah, there, and there's something going on with Outlook, too, but we'll, we'll work on it. Um, so now I need a motion to enter into executive session to discuss district security plan. Second. Discussion. 